When you live in a first world country like the United States, it is easy to take things for granted. In our country, we are afforded clean water and a modern sanitation system. Other parts of the world are not so fortunate. Kenya is a country in the world that does not have that luxury throughout its land. The sanitation is poor and half of the rural areas do not have access to potable water. This means that diseases like cholera, which belong to our past, are endemic to their present. In 2009, the number of cases of cholera in Kenya nearly quadrupled compared to the past years, reaching nearly 12,000 cases and totaling nearly 300 deaths. This cholera epidemic struck right after Kenya began to recover from a massive drought. The cholera first struck in the Nyanza province and then moved to the western, eastern, northeastern, Rifali, coast, and finally the capital and the largest city of Kenya, Nairobi. The Kenyan government blamed this cholera outbreak on the poor hygiene practices of its people, though their inefficient healthcare system is also probably a main reason of why the disease spread so quickly. Cholera incidence has decreased steadily since the beginning of the millennium. With cholera outbreaks persisting in Kenya, cholera continues to pose a serious public health problem among developing world populations which have no access to adequate water and sanitation resources. If a population has access to food water sources, they will be less likely to contract cholera. However, only 85% of Kenya's urban areas have access to this, and only 49% of their rural areas do. If a population has access to proper sanitation facilities, they will also be less likely to contract cholera. However, only a startling 19% of Kenya's urban areas have access to this, and only 48% of their rural regions do. The last risk factor for the spread of cholera is chronic malnutrition, which affects 31% of Kenya's total population. In 2007 cholera outbreak, there was a 5.6 case fatality rate. In 2008, there was a 3.4 case fatality rate. And in 2009, there was a 2.33% case fatality rate. Cholera is a tremendous economic burden on Kenya's healthcare system. The toll on the system escalates to a combined economic loss of $91.9 million for an average life expectancy of 43 years, $128.1 million for an average life expectancy of 53 years, and $156 million for an average life expectancy of 73 years. 5.1% of Kenyan GDP is spent on healthcare, only $6.20 is spent per person on health care. This lack of funding leads to subpar health care in their country. Kenyan health care is largely ineffective and inefficient, so the health care system is not able to handle large outbreaks of cholera very well, as shown earlier in the 2009 epidemic. The International Medical Corps has set up a water and sanitation program in the country and Kenya's Ministry of Health and the WHO are reducing a number of cases through the implementation of aid stations and education programs in high-risk areas. Methods of prevention include cholera kits that are distributed by health organizations like the WHO, UNICEF, and the Red Cross. It is recommended that Kenyans drink only boiled, bottled, or chemically treated water. Using filters, like the one pictured here, can also provide cleaner water that can be used for consumption. Try to avoid tap water and ice cubes. Wash hands with soap and disinfected water, not from the tap. Do this especially before eating and after using the restroom. Avoid unpackaged, undercooked foods and unpeeled fruits and vegetables. Finally, avoid contact with contaminated water or people that have been infected. There are two vaccines for cholera prevention. The one used in Kenya is called Ducoral. It is approved by the WHO and is used in over 60 countries. Effects of the vaccine are short and it only provides protection for up to six months. Vaccines are administered in two doses with a month between each dose. It can take up to a few weeks for the vaccine to take effect.
In order to control the spread of cholera, first seek treatment immediately, then administer oral rehydration salts to those that are infected. For severe cases, ORS are not enough, and the use of IV fluids may be required. Antibiotics can also be used to reduce symptoms.